Hello, I'm John Stapleton with Code VA, and this is a tutorial on if and unless blocks in the Twine chapbook story format. So I've got an empty uh, story here, and I'm going to show you what if and unless blocks are. Um, basically, what these, you know, coding things are is is a way to have the computer either hide or reveal parts of your passages uh, based on the value of a variable. Um, so if you aren't sure what a variable is and you're not sure how to like write variables in Twine, uh, check out the video in the description. Uh, there's, a, there's a link to it uh, that will help you with that concept because that, that's kind of a prerequisite here. So I'm going to make an example variable. And this variable is going to have a Boolean data type. So uh, it's not going to have like text, it's not going to be a number, it's going to be either a value of true or false. I'll start with the value of true. And uh, we're going to use this variable uh, to have the computer either hide or reveal a part of our passage. So I'm put some text, and then I can use an if block, which is looks like that, it's just if with square brackets, and after the word if, I'm going to put my example var variable. After the if block is the part of the passage that will either be hidden or revealed. Cool. So I have example var that can be either a value of true or false. And then here's the hidden message. Now, the if block will hide the text if the variable is false and reveal the text if the variable is true. So I'm going to go just test and you can see that we have both sets of text here. But if I change example var to false, and I test it, there's no extra text, the, the computer has hidden that text, even though it's written into the passage because of this if block, and the example var being false, the computer has hidden the section that comes after if. Um, see what happens if I, I wonder if, if it will, if it will hide both of those. Yep. Everything after example var gets hidden unless, oh, sorry, everything after the if block gets hidden unless example var is true. So now I've changed it to true and we have all of the hidden text is revealed. So that is, uh, if block, um, the unless block works exactly the same way, except it's just the opposite. Um, if example var is true and you use the unless block, uh, it'll hide the text. So right now example var is true unless example var. So we're going to expect this text to be hidden. Yep, it is indeed hidden. And if I change example var to false, we expect it to be revealed. There we go. That's, that's all that. Um, <laughs> if and unless blocks. Now, what you might be asking yourself is why, <laughs> why would I use this? What is, what's useful about this, this thing? If I don't want to show some text, I just simply would not type it. <laughs> and you would be absolutely correct to think about it that way. But the thing to remember is that with variables, we can have the computer change the value of the variable by itself, which means that we can use the variable as we modify it to like unlock parts of the passage if uh, we have the reader return to different parts of the story. So a good example is uh, think about like a locked door um, where you need the, the reader needs to like find a key is in as they navigate the story in order to have a uh, to or in order to like unlock the door in the story. You can create something like that in your your story by using if blocks. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that set up here so you can kind of like see what this would look like. So first, I'm going to make a variable called key. And this variable is going to keep have the is going to be what we use to keep track of whether or not the uh, reader has found the key in the story. Um, make a little title and a link to a passage. Now this next passage is going to have the door. And the way I'll lock the door is I'll have 
a, uh, an op- a, a link that will lead us to what's behind the door and a link to that leads us to what's in front of the door. Um, and if I can have the computer hide the link that uh, leads to behind the door, then they won't have access to it. So that, that's, that's the plan. So here, I'm going to type that out. Great. So I have my passage. It says, you see a large wooden door on heavy hinges with a big iron padlock holding it shut. We have two options. We can search the foyer and we can try the key in the padlock. Now, what I want to do is have the computer hide this try the key in the padlock. Oh, well, let me, let me, let me fill this out a little bit. I will say unlock. That will be that. Uh, and then search. I'll just have some placeholder so that I can uh, continue. Okay, cool. So we have the door. And what I want to do is have the computer hide uh, this option until the user finds the key uh, in the story. All right, now we don't have a way for them to find the key. I'll add that in a second. Um, but what we do have is this variable called key, and it starts with the value of false, which means, which kind of to me as the programmer, it means the user hasn't found the key. If the variable called key is false, that means that the user hasn't found the key yet. And I can use that if key. I can use that to have the computer hide this link option. Key is false. And the if block says that if the variable is false, hide everything that comes after it. So even though I've written this option for unlocking into the story, if I go into the story, you see the variable key has a value of false. We only get the one option to search the foyer. Now, if I have the reader return to the door after setting the variable key to true, they'll be able to see that next option. So I'm going to go ahead and write a little description. Um, the, the variable called key gets a value of true, but we also need to describe for the reader what happens in the story in order to make that variable change make sense. Okay, so here's my search passage. Uh, I set, I have the computer set the key value to true, and then there's this description which describes finding the key. Uh, and then we have a link back to the door, which is important because now that the variable has changed, the computer is going to do a different thing here because now after setting the key value to true, the if block is going to reveal this link. So you'll see what I mean. We kind of create like a little game, right? Like a little, a little thing. You have to like solve a little puzzle before you can move on to the story. Key is false, which means that even though I have a option, it's been hidden by the computer because the key value is false. Then if I go search the foyer, you can see the variable called key now has a value of true because in the search passage, I have this modification of the variable. We, uh, we found the key. So if I go back to the door, now we have both options because the if block has a true variable now, meaning it will reveal the line that follows it. That's if and unless blocks. There's one other thing that is useful. So for example, if you wanted to have, um, something that happens after the, the, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> after the if block that you don't want to be included inside the if block. Like for example, if you wanted to have, like if I want the computer to show this, even if key is false, you can use this continue block. And then this section will be excluded from the if. So um, I'll show you kind of what both, what they both look like. So we have search the foyer. Um, you can You can see that even though I have this text, it's being hidden because key is false. Um, if I want to show the text, I can say continue. So now we have both text. So continue is useful if you want to have your if like in the middle of a passage. Um, that's the last thing to, to know about if and unless blocks. And you can use continue with if blocks and unless blocks. So that is everything that you need to know about if and unless blocks. This is a super, super powerful concept to use in your stories. Um, you can use it to create like, like little games, like little little puzzles for the reader to solve as they read your story. Very, very fun stuff. Uh, if you have questions about this or you run into any problems implementing if and unless blocks, get in the comments below. We'd love to help you out with that. Um, there are links in the description to the variable basics tutorial. Uh, if, you, if the variable stuff here doesn't really make that much sense to you, you can get a lot more information about variables by checking that tutorial out. If you want a text version of this tutorial uh, that has code examples and screenshots and all sorts of other resources with it, uh, check out the link in the description to the Twine Trail Guide. It has all that for you there. Uh, 
So good luck implementing if statements and happy coding.